Hi. So <clears throat> I'm Dr. Emily. And this is my husband, Tony. Hi. Um, he's kind of in charge of the whole website thing and he's been doing some research, I guess. Um, and he says that you guys tend to like the more educational stuff. So we're going to try to do a little educational piece. Yeah. I hope you like it. So today we're going to talk about ticks, baby. Talk about ticks. I know there's a, they're singing. So now we're going to talk about ticks. All right. The glorious creatures that they are. Yeah. So what are ticks? Ticks are disgusting creatures that we had to worry about a little bit in Michigan, but now that we're here in Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley, they're a oh, major they're, problem. They're huge here and tons of ticks. How many ticks have you had on you since we've been here? Uh, one time I went running and I swear to God, I didn't touch a single plant that I know of. I stayed right in the center of the trail. And when I got in the car, I had probably like six ticks crawling on me. Yeah, it sounds And I right. flipped out, pulled over, and just like got out of the car and started throwing them off of me. They were awful. Yeah, I've already had two attached. I haven't had any attached so far. Um, Oscar had one attached to hit the back of his head. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We've been watching that one for for a rash, but we haven't seen anything. Oh. Um, so anyway, ticks are these nasty bugs. They're bugs. Um, they're arachnids. They're arachnids. They have eight legs. They have eight legs. And they are like blood-sucking parasites. They have to have a blood meal to do all of their transforming from little egg to nymph to adult and every step well, in between. Well, they go to larva first. That's why I said every step in between. Larva actually only have six legs, but they don't tend to bite you. The biters have eight legs. <laughs> all right, so there are like hundreds of types of ticks, but what are the most common types? Do you know? Um, so... The most common ticks are the Ixodes, and I don't know the species name behind that one. Wow. I know there's a there's a bunch of different Ixodes. And then there's the Derma Derma Center. You are going really uh, scientific on this. Then there's um, the Ribocephalus. I guess. Sure. Um. So. I was going with. Oh, the, deer tick. Deer. That that's, that's the one I was Ixodes. looking for. Oh. Um. Yeah. Deer tick or black legged tick, brown dog tick, lone star tick. Lone star tick. Three most common. And I feel like there's another one. Anyway. The long horned Asian tick. <laughs> long horned Asian tick. That's not made up. Oh, but that is a tick. Wait, we did the brown dog tick. Didn't we? we did. Most common. Um, so, anyway, I'm sure someone watching this is going to be itching to tell me we're wrong, but that's as much as we know. Well, those are all common ticks. Uh, that, that, that's what most people see. That's what we deal with the most. Um, so yeah, with with these little ticks, they they like to climb up on little blades of grass and stick out the front little legs and reach out for you, trying to give you a really gross hug. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And they don't jump. They they just climb up on long grass. That so that does that's why they say stay away. From tall grass, bushes, whatever you're in the woods, because you're gonna find them, especially around here. Really, the little buggers can be anywhere. I but, left my sweater on the grass the other, the short grass, the other day while I was weeding, and I got hot. And the next day, when I put my jacket on, I had ticks crawling on me. That just the jacket had just been sitting in the grass, the short grass. Do you know why? Because I left my sweater on the ground. And they have these like the little organs. The uh, howler legs. organs, yeah, on their, they have howler organs on their legs, and they are olfactory organs. Olfactory, olfactory, Not olfactory. We talked about this. We did. Go ahead, you can tell about it. Olfactory is the smelling part. Yes. Olfactory sounds like something a really nasty guy calls his bedroom. So yes, the olfactory, they smell you. They smell you coming, and they go wherever they can to get you. They'll hunt you down and drink your blood. All right. So why are they so dangerous? Why are ticks so bad? Other than being disgusting, they also transmit pretty serious diseases. Like what? Uh, Lyme disease is the big one around here. Deer tick. Mm -hmm. um, and Lyme disease causes arthritis, lethargy. It can also cause a really serious disease called um, nephritis, when the kidneys are affected and can fail. 
Um, that's more rare, but most of the time you'll see lethargy, fever, um, limping, they call it a shifting leg lameness because basically all the joints are affected and the dog or person seems to be painful on one joint and another and anyway. And Lyme disease, people can get it, dogs can get it. It's not, it's just not your dog. But people can't get it from dogs. Oh, I, no, they get it from ticks. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, if your yeah. dog has Lyme disease and he licks you, you're not going to get You're not going to get it that way, no. no. The, the other ticks are known for other diseases, but... Um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Rocky. Fever, um, Anaplasma, Ehrlichia. So, yeah, there's a lot, and there, there, there's more than we've named here. The little blood-borne pathogens. Yeah. That will... Ehrlichia will cause you to bleed out. Um, so that one's nasty. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so if a dog is positive for Lickia, um, obviously we'd want to know before we do a spay, because even a simple procedure like a spay, they could have some serious bleeding complications. All right. So, because ticks are so bad, we need to stop ticks. We need to prevent ticks. What is the best way to prevent ticks? Uh, the best way to prevent ticks is to talk to your vet and get the best flea and tick preventatives out there. It is. For your dog. But there's nothing for humans that I know of. It'd be nice. Oh, well, I mean, there's like the deep spray. Yeah, that's true. The deep woods. I would definitely spray yourself. Yeah, before going, going out in the woods. woods. Spray your children, spray yourself. Um, your dogs and cats need to be on flea and tick preventative. I yeah. personally like the oral products better just because I know that they're getting in the animal unless they vomit it. But... I know they're getting in the animal. They don't have that weird oily discharge afterwards. You don't have to worry about your kids touching them. Um, the collars, I find people don't put them on properly. Not um, tight enough. A lot of times, some of those collars have to be one finger tight, and a lot of people just have them hanging loosely off. And if it's spinning, it's not tight enough. And there's really only one collar I know of that works really well, and it's a resto collar, but it needs to be really tight. Not really, but like one finger tight. Um... I personally like products like uh, Brevecto, NexGuard, Semperica. Um, again, those are the oral products. All right, so um, if a dog comes in and you suspect it might have Lyme disease, why do you suspect it? What do you do? Well, I didn't really suspect Lyme disease until I got to working in Virginia, where pretty much if it's not an intact female and I can rule Pio off the pyometra off the list, then it might be Lyme disease. Um, it's really common here. We see it a lot. Um, dogs coming in if they're lethargic, lame, weak in the rear, um, fever, anything like that, then I will definitely suspect Lyme disease, even if they're vaccinated. Yeah, and we can run a test. Blood tests right in clinic. We can find out Takes in 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, definitely yes. worth it. All right, so... What do you suggest people do if they find a tick on their pet? Pull it off. Pull it off as close to the base as possible. You don't want, you, you don't want to twist. Mm -mm. You don't want to twist or jerk. Because that's going to pull the head Slow right off. Slow and steady. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about concerning ticks? Mm, you should get your pet vaccinated if you're, a t if you're in a Lyme endemic um. area. Mm -hmm. which we are right now. Um, I know Lyme disease is spreading more rapidly. I know when I was in Michigan, they were, it wasn't a very common disease, but it was becoming much more common. Um, so tick preventative is huge. Luckily, you get the added benefit of getting flea prevention. Can I tell you a funny story? Of course. So when I was first starting out um, as a vet, not at Dr. Pohl's, um, at one of my first clinics I worked, I was seeing this lady, um, her horse was having issues with his legs. He was biting and scratching and his legs were swollen. Um, and she called me out on emergency and I saw that her, her horse was covered in ticks. His, like his legs were just covered in ticks and he had edema and was swelling and was itching. And I was like, well, your horse was covered in ticks. And she started freaking out on me. And I was like, well, we'll just, we'll just pull them off. We'll, we'll treat them. There's some, there's some topical products you can use on horses, um, but it's not a huge deal. She, but she started flipping out on me and she started saying stuff like, well, what if, what if the ticks are inside of him? 
And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, ticks don't don't live inside of a body. They live on the outside of the body. And she was like, well, how do you know? And I was like, well, they have to have oxygen. Um, so they have to breathe. And she goes, well, if they're attached to the blood, then they can get the oxygen. Hmm. I was like, that's not how this works. <laughs> I live on oxygen, but if I'm sucking your blood, I'm not going to survive inside your body. Yes, I, also, they don't just affect dogs and humans, cats, sure. mammals. Yeah. All oh, right, is there anything else? Do you have any other stories about ticks? No. No. All, all five of us have had ticks since we've been here. Ticks are awful. Treat your dogs. There are so many preventable preventatives. Wait. There's so many good preventatives. There we go. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye. Let us know. Give us some feedback on what do you want us to talk about. Sure. Yeah, of course. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.